Hi, welcome to We're Talking Sports. I'm your host, Rick Schnabel. So don't touch that remote. We'll be right back show you a good show. show for you today. Our topic today is going to be the NFL Draft and we want to know what's going on in that first round and let's see how the local Baltimore Ravens and the Washington Redskins did. What do you say Alvy? Well I think the Redskins uh, did all right. I think they got a, a real steal there with Jonathan Allen. Um, he was projected to be a, a top five pick in the draft. Uh, Actually, number one throughout half the year of his college, his senior, after his half senior year of college. That's right. Yeah. Dropped down to number 17, and the Redskins picked him up. He's kind of a local guy uh, from Ashburn, Virginia. Uh, went to Stonebridge. A um, lot of local people will know him. Um, played at Alabama, had several great years. Basically, one of the top defensive players uh, in the country. Uh, but but fell to 17 where the Redskins could snag him. Um, what, what was the cause of his falling? You know, well, arthritis, his shoulders, injury, yeah. arthritis, yeah, yeah, rotator cuff, shoulder surgery. Uh, I think a lot of teams were afraid to take a chance on that. You know. Um, well, you know, a lot of people well, say he's, look at Drew Brees. He right, had no question. shoulder surgery, and no look question. how he came back. He's got to go to the same doctor. Yeah. He's got to get that same shoulder. He's got, he got <laughs> that repair. Well, the thing about it is, you got to look at it and you think, well, what are the other 16 teams saying? How did this guy drop? Everybody needs a defense end tackle, which he can play both positions. I mean, the guy in college was a freak. The guy had 44 and a half losses. You know, I mean, tackle losses. That's, Tackles for loss, That's yep. crazy. But Alabama, he's got, you know, Nick Saban, he has a NFL factory over there. No, there's I no mean, question. There, I mean, there was four kids from Alabama that were in the first round. I mean, that's crazy. I mean, there's a reason why. Well, there's a reason why they got a dynasty. Oh, yeah, and there's a reason why they, most every year they're in the championship. I mean, they lost to Clemson on that last second, six seconds, but Jonathan Allen, all year long, he was a beast. Well, that brings us to another draft pick, uh, D D Deshaun Watson, uh, who quarterbacked uh, Clemson. Another, another crazy surprise. You're telling me there's two quarterbacks better than Deshaun Watson in this draft? Come on. The, the guy that went number two, uh, Mitch Tobisky. Okay, Mitch Tobisky looked good. You know, he's got a good arm, everything. He was eight and five. He only had 39. I know college game doesn't always translate to the pro game, but Deshaun Watson, he has so much Russell Wilson in him. I mean, the guy is a winner. He had Alabama's defense with all these NFL players wearing themselves out. I mean, the guy wins wherever he wins. They should have beat Alabama last year because of Watson. So he should have had two national championships. And if, I mean, if he could do that against these NFL, future NFL players that are coming in late, hold on, he's going to have trouble going against the other guys? Oh, who, who thinks that? Well, everybody thinks that, all these so-called experts. He went down to uh, the third quarterback taken. He wasn't a top ten pick. The other two kids, well, the other one wasn't either. But Mitch Trubinsky, Chicago Bears, what are they thinking? Mm -hmm. You see, I mean, they gave up all those picks, moved up to get him. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I think that's a travesty. Yeah. Well, again, Tom Brady, he went in the sixth round. Well, no question and about look at, it. Look at him. No question Best about it. Best quarterback ever, most and, likely. And there is always bust, too, in the quarterbacks. No matter how good, look at Vince Young, how great he was in college. Vince Young had it. All right, let me cut you. I'm sorry. Okay, no he problem. can't sit on the sideline saying nothing. 
that that becomes obvious if you know so let me stop now and say you had your hand up earlier and I told you wait what would you what was your question like we were doing a new episode and Rick was introducing us back but like maybe nobody knows who Kyle and I are yeah exactly so he did need to do that but what I usually do is once we get the guts in the can Mm -hmm. then we go back and do intros and closes and segues and you know so we'll cover that but you need to get in there right now so and the best way for you is to ask him a question I think no wait a minute let me say cut let me stop talking and say action and that that, because I need a cutting edge okay all right and action Okay, hold on, I'm sorry. So, was, um, oh, wow, so what do you think about the draft? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, let's All talk right. about family affair. Let's go, hey, you know, a lot of people don't realize there was a little bit of family affair in this first round. And you can talk to Christian mm-hmm. Caffey, yeah. one number All right, eight. go for it. Action. Well, you know, a lot of people don't realize there was a family affair going on in this first round, too. Right. Uh, Ed McCaffrey, for instance, uh, played for the Denver Broncos. Has has three Super Bowls. His son Christian McCaffrey got picked. Uh, Carolina. Is, is he also he's a tight end? No, he, no he, he's he's more of a. Uh, he can do anything. Yeah, Slide he, back, not a tight end though. He's yeah. too small for being a tight end. But he's going to work magic with Cam Newton. I think he'll work magic. And uh, so he went to Carolina. What's that? Yeah. He went to Carolina. Yeah, he went to Carolina. Uh, Be a wide receiver. A, a whole Slide new down. weapon for them. You know, coming out of the backfield, uh, coming across in motion, that's that's what I see him doing a lot. Uh, the same way that the Patriots use some of their smaller backs. Um, once they get some momentum, you know, if you get them the ball, they can find holes. They can they can break game breakers. And what about J.J. Watt's brother? He went 29th. Yeah. He went to the Pittsburgh Steelers. His brother, how much younger is he than J.J. Watt's? Well, senior in college, J.J.'s been in the league, I think, since LeVar Arrington. So, LeVar was in the early 2000s. I'm right. ten, probably a 10-year Car- difference, right? yeah. I would think. He went 29 to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Alex, you know all about the Steelers, there's don't a, you? There's a few Watt, Watt brothers right. now, right, in, the, in yeah. the NFL. He makes number three. Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize yeah. there was three. Yeah. Derek plays fullback for the San Diego Of course, everyone's heard of J.J. Yeah. yeah. J.J.'s one of the greatest ever, obviously. If he, especially if he gets healthy, I'm sure he's got more years left in him. But Alex, since you're a big Redskin fan, you were talking about uh, Jonathan Allen. I think the biggest question was, you tell me, how did the Ravens not take O.J. Howard, the tight end for Alabama? I don't know anything about O.J. Howard. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, that's the tight end for Alabama. <laughs> All right, cut, cut, cut. All right, so why don't you ask that question of Rick? I don't okay. know him either. Yeah. No. All right. All right. Then cut, 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 cut. Now, see, We're we don't going. want to talk too much here because then I think I have footage and all I have is discussion, right. not real footage. Okay, because I'm counting the time. Let um, me ask Kyle that. Go yeah, Kyle yeah, did. that's a good idea. Well, right. No, no, let him do that. But we're running text, so let him do that. He's going to ask you that question. All right, and action. Kyle, how how do you think, how did the Ravens uh, pass up on O.J. Howard? It shocked me. Crazy. I mean... When I look back on it, okay, because I know, uh, what's his name? Oh, jeez. I know the defensive back that they took from Alabama is a hell of a player. I mean, he's got problems, but, oh, my goodness, Flacco needs to get some help. Right. I mean, O.J., is a, he's so talented. I mean, his best ball to me is in front of him. Now, Ravens pass on him, and who gets O.J. now? What you call it, the Tampa Bay Bucks with Jameis Winston. Now, Flacco, I have a feeling, is going to be looking like, man, I could have had O.J. doing them seam routes down the middle, getting everything open for my other receivers, getting the running game loose. Now, you know. But, you know, Humphreys is a great cover guy. The only thing about Humphreys, he gets beat on the deep ball. I mean, you saw that in the national game sometimes. He'll improve. Don't worry about that. He'll improve. And Ozzie Newsom knows what he's doing as a GM. Right. But I don't know. I, I was. I think a lot of people thought OJ would have been the better pick, and I do too. I mean, you know, OJ. I know defense wins championship, but no offense. I don't think New England scored that many defensive touchdowns in the Super Bowl, but I do know Tom Brady did. So you know what I mean? Well, that was one of the surprises too. Don't you think, Alex? Didn't everybody thought it would be mostly a defensive uh, draft, and it seemed that it uh, turned out to be a lot of offense going first. 
Especially the first ten picks. Yeah, the top ten picks. I think uh, seven or eight of them were yeah. were offense. Oh, it's unbelievable because yeah. everybody, all these quote so-called experts, oh defensive draft. There might not be, and the quarterbacks weren't going to get drafted in the first round. A lot of them were saying, all oh, these quarterbacks aren't worth first round picks, and you know obviously a lot of teams disagreed because three quarterbacks won in the first 12, 13 picks. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I, it wasn't supposed I, to be I, such a great quarterback draft this year, a big, you know, a quarterback crop, but three okay. three okay. in the well, first round. Well, oh, great. I think we summarized the draft for you this, this time. It's about time for us to go to a break. Come on back. We'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, now let's just come back to the second segment, okay? I'm okay. welcoming us back and, and then throw it to him what the topic is. Rick, okay. you're, you're okay. on stage and action on Rick. We're going to talk about the just what coming back, now? yeah. No, just say. So, what are we talking about now? Okay, and um, welcoming us back and action. Welcome back. Well, our next segment, Kyle. What do you think? I think we should be discussing the Baltimore sports legends and the Washington sports legends because I think the locals want to hear what we have to say about the great Frank Robinson. Who else for the Baltimore? Now, the Orioles. There's so many. Brooks players. Robinson, Boob Pal, uh, Johnny Unitas. I mean. You go Cal Ripken. Cal Ripken. And the great Ray Lewis in football. Washington's yep. had a million of them, especially in uh, football. John Riggins, Joe Theismann, Dexter Manley. I mean, we, yep. can, we can go on the Hogs. We can Sonny go on Jerkson, that. Sonny Jerkson, the Hogs. Sonny Jerkson, the Hall of Famers. Joe Super Theismann. Super Bowl wins. Yeah, Joe several Theismann. Super Bowl. Coach Gibbs. Um, yeah. There's, also the Ravens, you know, had some Super Bowl wins as there's well. Been, there's been all kinds of great uh, athletes that have come from the Baltimore sports teams and the Washington sports team. I mean, you could talk about Ovechkin in, in hockey, and you could talk John Wall in the NBA, and you could talk Bryce Harper in baseball, you know. And we did have RG until his injury made him, you know, that was pretty much destroyed his career. Oh, yeah, but good season. But the Washington's have, still has a lot of Hall of future potential Hall of Famers. Baltimore O's, they got Manny Machado. And I tell you what, what do you think between Manny Machado and Bryce Harper? Two superstars. I mean, uh, young superstars. Young yes. superstars. They still have a lot of uh, games ahead of them. Um, probably they, a lot of records uh, they, to, to break. And, and, if they uh, both can stay healthy, yeah, I'm sure you'll see the names yeah, of the record books. Yeah, and the, they both, it, it's, it's amazing that they play different positions. They played, I mean, they both got drafted in the 2010 draft. Bryce Harper went number one. Manny Machado went number three. And you, you knew all that potential right there. And these guys are showing that potential. I mean, now, I mean, you look at what they've done. They both got in the league two years later in 2012. They're both up at day playing. They both suffered severe injuries. Bryce had a bum knee, and we saw Manny Machado's injury running the first base a couple of years ago. Whoa. That's amazing. That kid's even playing baseball as far as I've been so when you see it. You saw that, and you know, you, you know that thing snapped like Joe Theismann's leg. And you Couldn't know, tell it now, the way he's No, playing. no. He's having a little trouble at the bat. But with the similarity to the, those guys, you know, Manny Machado, his average now is 280 his career average. Bryce Harper's is 283. I mean, it's kind of spooky. You know, you, you know, you having these guys that came to Lincoln at the same time, you know, Bryce Harper's more of a, first thing you think about Bryce, oh my God, he's a power hit. Right. Oh man, this guy is a bat when he's healthy. His problem is he won't stay healthy. You know that, Alex. You've seen him play in times. We were at the game when he hit that grand slam last year. Remember that? Yeah. Oh, that, that thing, was awesome. Oh, that thing was rocketed. <laughs> and Manny Machado, we were at that game when he hit the one against the Nats. I think he hit two ones against the Nats. I mean, these kids, the, the talent level of these kids. Manny's throwing off a little slow, though, in the bat. But Manny's fielding is amazing. Yeah, he still has, oh, definitely. He still has the power to put it out in any pitch. No question. He, he'll, he'll get it going. He'll, he'll get it going. But, you know, when he came out of high school, People were comparing him to Alex Rodriguez. Remember, he's kind of like Cal Ripken. As when Cal came in the league, he came in thinking he was going to be a third baseman, switched to shortstop. Manny got in the league, everybody thought he'd play shortstop, but J.J. Hardy, he moved to third base. Right. So, but he's Brooks Robinson. You've seen him play. Kid's amazing on, on the oh, field. Oh, he's made some similar plays. Yeah. yeah. Three-time gold glove already. I mean, I mean, crazy. Good, a good-sized kid, as is Harper. Um, yeah. Good-sized kid, good feet. Uh, great hands, uh, can get the ball to first whenever it's needed. Um, 
What would you think, I mean, if you had to put your future, who would you take? Mm. Well, the way Harper's playing right now and uh, the way he played a couple of years ago, you know, and, and if you can keep the same type of lineup where he's kind of protected in front and behind and they can't really pitch around him, uh, he could he could break a lot of records. I mean, he's hitting 450 foot homers like it's yeah, nothing. He hit the other day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, Dead center. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the pitch against Colin, Colin, the pitcher against Atlanta, he knocked the ball off that line drive. That went to right field a minute of a second. They said it was 114 miles an hour. Right. I mean, what what wrist action does that kid got? You know, I think Bryce and Manny. I think the only thing that can hold them guys back is injuries. Or themselves, maybe mental, right. because the talent level that both kids have, right. it's, it's it's really something to watch. And you're going to see in the future, God forbid, you know they don't they they stay healthy. You're going to their, their best balls ahead of them. Right. Manny's batting. You know, year in and year out, Manny bats a good, two high two hundreds. You know, he's not over two ninety, but he's on the two eighty range, and that's his career average. Right. But he's there. He's twenty four. Bryce is twenty four. I mean, these kids. You know, 28 years is supposed to be, you know. Yeah, they're still you, they're still yeah. young. Oh, it's amazing. And, and if management can keep uh, Harper from running into the outfield wall sure. and, and and diving for balls healthy. that you know right. could could injure him, um, in right. situations where you know it's not like a game saving catch, um, right. you know he's got to think about the future and not getting himself hurt. Sure. How about Manny? I mean, a couple of weeks ago, what was that guy threw at him? <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm like, Dude, he's trying to end Manny's career. <laughs> I mean, okay, if a pitcher's going to, you know, that's the only way I see Manny and Bryce not, you know, being Hall of Famers. Right. I, I know I know it's crazy because, come on, man, it's only the fifth year, sixth year they're playing. A, hey, these kids, their talent level, there's a reason why Bryce and him were taking one and three. Right. And these guys, to me, are living up. You know, I, obviously Bryce had a bad year last year playing with that neck injury. I don't know why he would do that. And Manny's starting off slow a little bit this year. But you'll see Manny kick in. He'll, he'll, he'll start hitting the ball. And he's, you know, these, both of these guys have speed. So, you know. You yeah, know, he can throw the ball. Well, that's, that's quite interesting. And they have a great future in front of them. And with that, our future's a break. We'll see you in just a minute. What do you think we're going to talk about now, Kyle? We're going to talk about the mega fight that everybody's talking about. Conor McGregor versus Floyd Mayweather. Yes, MMA against boxing. Is McGregor crazy? He's going to fight Floyd Mayweather, arguably the greatest defensive fighter in the history of boxing, in a boxing match. Nope, he is not crazy. He's going to get $75 million to $100 million. He's already signed his party agreement at, the, at this time, as Alex knows. Floyd hasn't signed that contract, but I don't understand why Floyd wouldn't, unless Floyd doesn't think this is even worth it. Because I don't think there's anybody on this planet that honestly thinks Conor McGregor has a chance. Do you? Not in a boxing match. It, right. would, it would be kind of a fluke or a fix, in my right. opinion. Um, right. A, right. a fluke punch. McGregor's strong. I mean, don't right. get me wrong. Right. He, can, he can hurt you. Um, He's got Mayweather, though, you know, it's hard to beat a guy at his own game. Yeah, he, uh, Mayweather's a boxer. Yes. Um, McGregor, I'm sure he does some boxing training, right. but he's he's not a boxer at the level that Mayweather's at. You can't emulate going into another sport. Now, somebody mentioned the other day to me, do you remember 1976 when Ali fought that wrestler, uh, uh, Naki from Japan? I said, yeah, I was a kid. I kind of remember that. But it wasn't a boxing match, and Muhammad Ali wasn't even in a uh, K1 
kickboxing thing. But the guy was kicking him. Right. Okay, well, unless Conor McGregor legally hits him with, you know, shots with the leg <laughs> and, and MMA shots, how is he going to hit Floyd? Right. But, you know, Floyd, Floyd gets that shoulder going. I know they say Floyd's got trouble with southpaw. Okay, a guy that's never put on boxing gloves, he know McGregor's got a great left with no gloves on. But how is he going to hit Floyd with that? I mean, Floyd, Floyd can close his eyes. Floyd has been boxing since he was four years old, and he doesn't get hit. He doesn't take punches. I know he has been out of the ring for two years. But Connor, he just had his first son. Connor's been out of the MMA ring for, it'll probably be by the time they fight. If they sign the fight, I'm sure it's going to be this fall. Connor will be out of the MMA ring for a year. But I don't blame them. I don't blame the kids. If people want to watch this fight, somebody's paying for it. This fight, to me, this fight is all about the hype. Yes. You know, the, the hype is, is the whole story. Yes. And both of them know how to hype a fight. Oh, uh, McGregor runs his mouth. Money. For promotion. the past year, McGregor's run his mouth. Yes. For the past two years, well, it's not two years, but forever, Mayweather's <laughs> run his mouth. Yeah. Um, so, McGregor just said in the fight for yesterday, had me Allen. He said, Floyd, sign it. I'm already in training. His first day of training said he was yesterday. He goes, you signed this contract or you just all mouth. McGregor's calling. <laughs> McGregor's calling Mayweather all mouth. The best thing about this fight won't even be the fight. The best thing about this fight will be the pre-fight. The pre-fight, Those yep. two are the Ali's of their sport now. I mean, McGregor, oh, my gosh, you're talking about a mad leprechaun. You know, he's got, <laughs> he's got Ireland all up in the tiff. And, hey, the guy is awesome in the sport. Inside of him, I mean, he's strong mentally. I know he's got to think, like, okay, he's taking this fight, obviously, for the money. I don't blame him. If people want to watch this, and I would think if Mayweather, I don't blame Mayweather if he doesn't sign it because you've got to be crazy. He's going to make, like, $125 million. That could be the case. But I would be, I wouldn't be shocked if he didn't sign it because, what has he got to gain? He already made a half. He made a quarter of a billion, a million, a billion dollars when he fought up Pacquiao. He doesn't need the money. Right at that weight right. class, he's the top guy. Nobody, right. nobody's beat him. Right. So, what's he, what's he like, gained right. by beating a guy from the MMA right. who doesn't right. do boxing training right. every day his whole right. life? What do you think? What do you think will happen? What's your prediction? What do you think? <laughs> right. You gotta go with Mayweather. Okay, well, yeah. I'm well, just wondering how long they're going to try to hold out and hype it even more and more to build the purse. Oh, sure. right. You know, I mean, well, at, at some point, team. enough is enough already. You know, a lot of people are saying, well, you know McGregor's going to go the distance. No, I don't. Oh, yeah. Mayweather hasn't knocked anybody out since 2011. I, I remember when he knocked out uh, Ricky Hat. You know, he stepped to the left and hit him with a, he called it a clock hook. You know, uppercut hook. Ricky was out. Boom. Gone. He's going to hit McGregor blind shot. McGregor can't emulate in sparring right. what Mayweather's going to do. Now, I, I'm not saying Mayweather. I think Mayweather's going to stop him no later than seven. And I wouldn't be surprised if he cuts, if he cuts McGregor right off the bat. You know, because those boxers, they do, you know, all those ex experienced people, mm -hmm. when they throw their jabs, they're twisting it like Herons used to do that. Mayweather knows all the tricks. I mean, he's not going to get hit. He's going to toy with uh, McGregor. Like, and McGregor, he's going to go back to Dublin with uh, $75 million. Nobody's going to blame McGregor, even no matter how bad McGregor looks, even if he gets knocked out in one punch. I don't think anybody really thinks he's going to win that fight. Or really has a chance. He's got a puncher's chance, but he's never even put on a boxing glove in a regular... How many people will be at this fight? I would think 90,000, 75. I'm sure... Is it... Most likely to be in Vegas. Probably. You know? yep. I mean, all Ireland's going to come over, and they're going to, you know, they're all going to be hyped up. You know, they think it, you know, there's, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people throwing money down. I don't know what the odds are going to be, you know, for this fight, but it's going to be Floyd. And I, you know what? I might take the cracker just because, just in case this thing is fixed. That's <laughs> do, just it. Do I got 20 to <laughs> That's just it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if you think about Vegas and, and them setting up, what would be bigger than a second fight if McGregor sure. if McGregor sure. somehow pulls off a victory oh, here? Yeah, no um, question. How, how much bigger would a second fight be? Sure. And Mayweather has an excuse. He's been out of it for a few years. Yeah, so, he hadn't fought in two years. I mean, I know he doesn't he doesn't want to lose. 
to anyone. Right. You know, no he's question. got that competitive spirit. I think we might be you don't want to lose Rocky but, sequels. But, right. but, you know, cha-ching. Well, well, you <laughs> he know sees what, the money rolling in. Right. Well, you know what Floyd said? And I kind of think, like, eh, I think you might be just Josh a little bit. He said he didn't even know who Conor McGregor was. Right. He said that one of his trainers told him, because, hey, did you see about this crazy leprechaun guy from Ireland? Because he jumps in everybody's face. Remember the movie Leprechaun? Oh, my God. You know, his last fight, he's still on bottles <laughs> That Nate Diaz. You know, at the pre-fight, he got suspended from the UFC. Well, he got a fine from the UFC. Hey, can you, when, hit, when Floyd gets in, when them two get straight away, they're going to break, have to break those guys up. But see, people are going to see that McGregor's taller. Oh, McGregor's the bigger man. Listen, it, that doesn't matter. <laughs> that's, that's not going to matter to Floyd. I mean, McGregor could be a foot over him. You can't. Come on. You, it's like me. Okay, I'm going to come in the ring. And uh, not in the ring. I'm going to come on the basketball court. Yeah, I want to play LeBron James. That's what basically, I, I know Connor does the MMA stuff, but that box and he holds that, you know, and the MMA thing he does, he holds it like this. Come on, you're going to have your fist <laughs> down and, and you're going to learn how to keep your hands up? Like those guys in the yeah, 30s. Well, yeah. Do, because, do because, this. because in the MMA, he's looking for the guy that's shooting. He's got that quick left. He's got a super quick left. Right. I've seen him fight in MMA. A, a very tough kid. He, but he, he just can't. Another sport. It, it, it's a hype thing. And if Conor McGregor wins fair and square, and whatever he does, God bless him. I mean, I I, I wouldn't think that. I There's think no they both to... win no matter what the outcome of yes. the fight is. Yes. They're both winning. That's and, what it and, is. You know. Right. And I don't blame either of them. Hey, yeah, ice, want to ice up your face, take your right. bruises, bumps, right. you know, but all the way to the bank. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I really think Floyd, and I, you know, I really think he's going to cut him up. I, I, I just think he's going to hit him all the time with gloves. See, Connor got knocked out. Well, he didn't get knocked out, but you saw him against Diaz in his MMA sport. Right. He got knocked down. And, you know, he, he was tired. I know MMA takes a lot more strength out of you. And Diaz than is a bigger guy yeah, at, at but, fight time. But remember, Diaz hit him and he rocked. I mean, right. he was out of it. It was like. No offense, Nate's not. A, Nate Diaz isn't a big puncher. Okay, he can probably. See, I still don't think he can punch hard than Ford. Everybody keeps trying to tell me, well, Ford can't punch. Hard. Listen, he can punch, but he's more of a boxer. If if he knows McGregor can't throw nothing back at him, he's going to put more of his. He'll find the uh, weaknesses. Yes, and, and he'll, he'll take put, advantage of them. He'll have his yeah. balance to where he's throwing harder punches. Like when Ricky Hatton, that was a hell of a fight. Ricky Hatton was staying right with him. And then Floyd, his, his, I know he's 41 years old. Right. His stamina is amazing. I mean, that's when he gets better. Right. Everybody wears down and Floyd's getting better because Floyd's figured people out and he's jamming. And his stamina, but he is 41. It, it kind of reminds you of Ray Leonard. People used to think yeah. he was sort of more like pity pad pity and pad. just jabbing and yes. stuff and dodging. Yes. Uh, but, hey, he... he Took out Hearns, yes. uh, Hagler, oh, oh, you know, oh. stronger guys, oh, oh, guys that had yeah. some punches. Ray, Ray, Ray stood toe to toe with Duran, and yeah. then I, I thought that too. When I saw him, I said, ah, "Ray's just he's just quicker than everybody. He can do this and that." Then it was time to show everything, you know. Yeah, yeah. he Great. could do his thing. Well, we're looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to that pre-fight. <laughs> <laughs> keep hyping, keep hyping it. <laughs> right. All right, guys. With that in mind, thank you for joining us, Kyle, Alex. Appreciate you being here. No problem. We're talking sports. Hope to see you again.